This is the Smart Prime 7, Vodafone's mid-range smartphone. It comes in at a very, very reasonable £75, and on paper, the specs are not bad at all. So I guess the question is, could you actually use this as your daily driver? I'm Juice B from Techstuff UK. Let's find out in my full video review. Starting off with the design of this device then, and I think it's actually very, very nice. In fact, I think it's one of the best features of this phone. Up front, you've got this huge glass panel, of which I think actually resembles an iPhone, especially with its beautiful curved corners and edges. The panel is only interrupted by the tiniest of speaker grills up top and that five megapixel selfie camera. None of the sensors that this phone has are actually visible at all. And then down the bottom of the device, we've got three capacitive buttons which only light up when you press them. They seem to work most of the time, but sometimes I found myself having to press them, you know, once or twice. They definitely weren't the best I'd ever used. On the right hand side of the device we've got three physical buttons, the power button and then obviously up and down on the volume rocker. These buttons felt really really good and they worked every single time you press them. They had that like one plus three style kind of texture on them which is something I really really like. And then on the top of the phone we've got your three and a half millimeter headphone jack and then a little microphone. Down the bottom we have your little speaker grill a micro USB port for charging and USB transfer and then another little microphone. The back of the device has that nice texture that we've seen on Vodafone phones before along with the little logo. It is actually removable to reveal a non-removable battery but you do get access to your SIM card slot and expandable storage. Performance then, well I was so intrigued by this phone that I actually took it out as my only phone for a whole day. I left my normal phone at home and just went out with this phone alone. The 5 inch 720p display actually looked pretty good. It was nice and bright. I could see it pretty well in sunlight and also in low light as well. On everyday apps like Facebook Messenger and Twitter, things like that, I didn't really see the lower resolution. It was when it came to Instagram and YouTube that I kind of did notice a slight difference. Things were not quite looking as sharp or as good detail. When it came to listening to audio, obviously when I had headphones plugged in it was as good as the headphones were, but the inbuilt speakers When playing music or video, it actually sounds alright. It's, it's, you know, it's a smartphone speaker. It's perfectly good at low to medium volume, but when you do turn it up a little bit more, the music definitely turns a little bit tinny. On the phone, the speaker, the person you're listening to sounds super clear and also um, when you're talking, from, re from my reports, from what I've heard from the other person, I sounded perfectly good as well. The phone's Snapdragon 210 processor and 1GB of RAM handles almost all everyday tasks with a breeze. You may get a little bit of lag here and there but nothing that is going to ruin your experience. Regarding gaming and more powerful apps, well, this phone may struggle. You're not going to be able to play Pokemon Go. You're not going to be able to play many major racing games. You'll probably be stuck with your standard Angry Birds or maybe Hill Climb Racing, that kind of thing. I guess the use of these kind of major games and high-end apps is kind of backed up by the amount of storage you get. You're stuck with 8 gigabytes of internal and half of that's easily taken up with the Android OS. So unless you're going to get a micro SD card, you're not going to be able to store that much data on this device. Which is a shame because you're not going to be able to make full use of um, these great cameras that this phone actually has. You've got an 8 megapixel camera at the rear which amazingly records full 1080p video. Definitely something I wasn't expecting. And for those selfies you've got a 5 megapixel shooter. The pictures that the camera produces are decent. You know, you could put them on a social media account, you could a maybe even print some off, but the colours are not that vibrant and we do lack some detail in areas. When it comes to video, this camera is pretty impressive because it does shoot in full 1080p. Obviously because the screen is 720 it doesn't look quite as good on the phone, but when you take it off the phone and onto the computer, the footage is very, very acceptable. Something which I'd say could definitely be used on like social media and YouTube and that kind of thing. 
finally then on to software and we'll just stick with the camera for a brief moment because I really like what Vodafone have done here. Instead of just being all very automatic there is actually a manual mode on this camera which means you can select more professional um, settings like you can choose your ISO that you take pictures with, you can choose the exposure, things like that that really do make a difference when you're taking pictures but that aren't always offered. Elsewhere on the phone, well it's kind of a similar experience. We have a nice stock Android experience with some additions from Vodafone that really help, that really do make a difference when you're using the phone. Some handy features that make your life easier. These include shortcuts to the Torch app, calculator, camera, right from the lock screen. My only criticism really is the amount of bloatware that Vodafone put on the phone. There's loads of Vodafone apps that they're pushing your way, you know, saying you must install these. They're going to make your phone better, but really, really they're not. There is, there's no need for them. Luckily, you can actually delete these apps, so that's not so bad. But I just think there was no need for them in the first place. A good example of this is the phone and messaging app. Vodafone have made their own Call Plus and Message Plus. I mean, what was wrong with the normal the normal phone and messaging app? You know, that's all I'm saying, guys. That's all I'm saying. I guess that is just about it from my testing. But I do know, guys, that you're going to be asking one big question. What is the battery life like? Well, it's got a 2,500 mAh battery. This easily gets to you through a whole day. Maybe even two if you're being a little bit power cautious. To summarise then, the Smart Prime 7 is a cracking little smartphone. Yes, it has its flaws, but nothing that's going to ruin your experience completely. Back to my original question at the beginning, could you use it as your daily driver? The answer is yes. In fact, I think this is perfect for your young child's first phone. Or maybe even your phone, if you're on a little bit of a budget. There you go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.